All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Canadian International Organ Competition live stream Q&A for Pipe Dreams. Uh, my name is Thomas Leslie. I'm the executive director of the um, CIOC, and it's great to have three of our prize winners here on the line with us. Uh, Wan Shen, all the way from Beijing, China. Welcome. Al C. Chris, who's currently in Texas and Nicholas Capitoli, who's in Montreal, uh, as well as our uh, film producer and creator and uh, director and executive, uh, everything to do with making this film to come together, Stacey Tenenbaum. So thank you for, uh, for this project. And I think uh, it's kind of, um, the, these guys, some of you may have heard that we've pushed back the next, competition edition, which normally would have been in October 2020. We've moved back to October 2021. So all of these prize winners here are going to get an extra year uh, as, as being uh, our flagship winners. So it's, uh, I'm glad to have them with us for, for an extended period of time and looking forward to hearing questions for, that you might have. And uh, I think lots of people had a chance to see the film uh, last night and perhaps today. And if you haven't watched it yet, uh, I think it's there, there are multiple uh, screenings this week. And I believe you can also watch it on demand from, uh, from the PBS website. So voila, uh, welcome everybody. Stacy, do you have anything you wanna say before we kick off with some of the questions? Well, I'm just so happy to see everyone again. It's really fun for me. Uh, we haven't gotten together in a long time, so it's great. And especially uh, Yuan, who I haven't seen since I was in Beijing last uh, this summer, so it's wonderful uh, to have you here so early in the morning. So uh, yeah, I'm just really thrilled to have everyone here. Great. Um, so first of all, Pipe Dreams was filmed way back in 2017, mm -hmm. uh, which seems to be, well, it is getting further and further away, but particularly the last three months uh, has sort of been a seismic shift in the entire world. So uh, how, how have you guys been keeping busy? What have you been up to since uh, 2017? Let's start with Nick here in Montreal. Yeah, um, so kind of the short term after, right after the competition, First of all, I got to relax a bit because I mean, just preparing for the competition for over a year and then finally being over with it was like, what do I do with my life? Uh, but eventually, you know, time moves on. Um, I Shortly after the competition, I signed on to an artist management agency in Houston, Texas, which was really great, I think, to um, get a wider audience and be able to reach more people um, on, a, on a bigger platform. So that was really nice. And yeah, since then I've doing, been doing a lot of concerts and whatnot, of course not now. Um, and I, and I've, since the competition, I've gotten a lot more contacts, especially in Canada, I'm American. Um, so being able to meet more people uh, throughout Canada was really a great opportunity. And then with this uh, documentary, with all the film festivals we got to do, we got to travel with Stacey, got to even perform even more. That was just the extra bonus, I think, of being in the 2017 competition, was just having this documentary follow me and, and forever, because <laughs> it's, it's memories that I can look back in that documentary and say, oh yeah, I remember when I looked like that, or my dog was like that, and my mom was like this. So that's it's just really, it was just really great memories, so yep onwards from here, so. Oh, and you got your doctorate, come on. I have, yeah. <laughs> Good, how about you, Elsie? Well, I think kind of like Nick, I spent about a year in Montreal, um, finishing up my coursework for the exact same degree that Nick just got. Um, he actually started a year after me and we ended at the same time. So I think he's a little quicker than me on the uptick. <laughs> but I actually moved back to the States in 2018 and I took a church job in Ohio. And so I worked there for a while and commuted back to Montreal to do my degree. Um, that was pretty hectic. And then after that, I ended up getting a teaching position at Wesleyan University. Uh, so now I teach full time, essentially. Um, I had about 15 Oregon students this past year. So that was really cool. Some of them composers and things like that. Uh, but also like Nick, I think it's been really hard with the pandemic uh, because I think for all of us, this is such a pivotal time in our career where we're really supposed to be forging ourselves, our identities and our paths. And it's kind of hard when you have all that shut down. So 
I'm sure we're all having to get creative to try to still be artists in this climate. Right. And uh, how about you, uh, Juan Shen? Uh, um, during the competition, I was start, uh, still study in Berlin. And uh, after one year, I finished everything and come back to Beijing. Uh, I'm pretty much focused uh, on teaching, like what I told in uh, the in Canada during the movie screening. I say that uh, maybe I will send my student come to CLC for the next, maybe not for the tw uh, 2021, but maybe next. And uh, teaching online now in China is uh, per, uh, most of the time uh, we have to teach online because all the university closed. It's a little bit uh, difficult both for the professors and the students. Uh, and uh, I am now more focused on translate some books uh, like uh, Professor Lockwick's books to Chinese or doing a more transcription of Chinese orchestra to organ music. That's what I focused on. And the life in Beijing is a little bit nervous, but we still can hold on. Good. Well, great. And uh, for any of you who've been in uh, Montreal for any of the co competitions or concerts that we have, um, they're usually followed with a little uh, wine and cheese cocktail. So in honor of all of, all of the concerts that we've had to postpone in the last three months, we have our, we, we have our wine cocktail here uh, with all of you tonight. So if you're watching from home, please uh, grab a glass of wine and join us uh, at least virtually. All right, let me see um, <clears throat> why I, this is a bit of a loaded or a trick question um, as in why did you agree to be part of the documentary? Because um, we didn't, I think the CIOC was, was so uh, 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 motivated to get to see this project to fruition. We sort of, maybe not snuck, but put the, uh, the, the release to participate in the film in with all of the other fine print that you sign when you agree to be a competitor. But uh, why, so, so one of the questions is why did you agree to be part of the documentary? But in a sense, um, some of you may have agreed without even knowing that you had agreed. So uh, in, in above and beyond that, maybe you could say, uh, what, what did you enjoy most about, the, uh, about working and interacting with the documentary crew? I would say, before I say about most, I think like every normal person, being followed by a camera is not easy. None of us have ever been in a you know, motion picture before. Uh, so having a camera follow your every move is, is kind of scary at first. And you're always second guessing what you say and how you play, especially because your playing is a big part of it. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, I've enjoyed, since then I've gotten, I think I've gotten used to the camera and having, having Stacy around me and the crew uh, following different concerts leading up to the competition. Um, so I think, and actually that was a, I think a really nice part of preparing for the competition itself was being on, on the documentary and the, the filming because you have to be, every competitor is filmed at the competition and you're live, you know? So having that practice of being like, being presented like that is really great. So I enjoyed that. You, um, I think you called them your lucky charms, didn't you? They were because I feel like a lot of the performances I had with Stacy and the crew before the competition were really great, and then she was there for the for the actual competition. And I and I think <clears throat> I don't know for sure, but I think oh, <coughs> pardon me. I think at the beginning Stacy was a little bit wor not worried about generating content and managing. Uh, uh, optimal opportunities to capture you because I remember right after we had finished the um, preliminary jury selection and, and she knew who was getting uh, uh, going to be invited to compete in the, the live rounds and she like made up a schedule of okay uh, I'm going to arrange to be in a car with Alcee at this time on this day can you call him then and tell him that he's coming. And normally I don't call all the competitors. Most of them don't live in Montreal. Uh, we just send them an email. <clears throat> but so uh, I was, I, I, I played along 
And then Alcy was very quick to, to figure out what was going on. He said, he said uh, I know what you're doing here. <laughs> this, was, this was all staged. This was all planned. And Nick was, was really good. He was super <laughs> it was awesome. And actually, we did cut together that scene, which I don't think you guys have seen, but we actually cut together a little scene of the judging, which I don't even know if you've seen, Thomas. Uh, and we had both Elsie and Nick being told that they were in the competition in that scene. And it was really cool, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so Elsie, uh, what did you like about having your a pit crew? I mean, honestly, Stacy will tell you at the beginning, I was very against it. And I think the line at first for me was anything to do with like my family. I was super protective of my family at first. I think that was the hard part. And unfortunately, Stacy will tell you, we missed some great footage because I was being such a pain. There was one- So, you're, thing. so, yeah. so you, were high, you were high maintenance before you won the competition? That's not, that's not my fault? Okay. It's not, good you can't see. help it. <laughs> don't let it, don't lose sleep over it. But, I, I, but the funny thing is that Stacy, I think as Stacy got to know my family and forged those connections and really, I mean, there was, People, when they were filming my family, people were crying. It was just a ball fest. I mean, they were just so entrenched in our in our culture, with our family. And I think it was that at that moment that I really just let my guard down. And I was telling in, in another interview, it would almost be weird for them to not be there. I would like think something was wrong if Stacy weren't there, you know, <laughs> breathing there. down my neck. <laughs> You're like, nothing, 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 is, nothing good or funny is gonna happen today because the camera's not here. Exactly. <laughs> how about you, Wan Chen? How often do you have a, a, a film crew from Canada show up in China and follow you around? Well, uh, at the beginning, I was quite nervous because my, <laughs> my English speaking is not my mother language and uh, uh, I would worry about uh, that, uh, but later it's uh, pretty good and the interview is very um, friendly and uh, Stacy uh, become very good friend with my parents and we uh, eat, uh, we have dinner, go restaurant together and uh, I think the, the best part for me uh, in this movie is showing every musician every second, every minute they play on stage cost 20 years work time and uh, under the, we say under the stage, which is in the practice room. So showing musician is a normal human. And uh, for example, the, the Stacy visited me when I study in Berlin and uh, uh, him high cooking and shopping for myself and uh, go to church in the midnight and the locked door and it's feeling super scary to be alone in a church. And uh, I, I, uh, I feel very, a warm that Stacy stayed with me all night during I uh, practice uh, in that night in a in, in church. She so, was she was jet lagged, so it was like being daytime <laughs> for her anyway. It doesn't no, matter. Because <laughs> you are making such a delicious meal. She made like a five course, I don't know, seven course. It was this huge meal that she cooked for me and the crew uh, at her apartment in this tiny little apartment in Berlin. And we ate this fantastic meal. So of course I couldn't leave her alone in the church after. <laughs> Um, for everybody who's, for, oh, sorry, go ahead, Wan Chen. So I, all the memory that uh, we have during the, the uh, filming is perfect, perfect memory. Good. Uh, for anyone who's watching us right now, if you have questions uh, you want to add to my list that uh, that were submitted prior to to tonight, please just uh, send them in the comments on uh, on the Facebook live stream or the the YouTube live, and then we'll weave them into uh, to the list. And happy to hear from you, and happy to hear any comments if you've, uh, but preferably only good comments about the film. Um, uh, we are, <laughs> we only accept compliments. <laughs> so, Stacy, uh, speaking of compliments, how did you choose which of the twenty competitors you uh, would make it into the film? Because that in itself is uh, it, is a great compliment. Uh, yes, uh, I actually uh, I don't not no one not everyone knows this, but they uh, have an original round of judging before they choose the top twenty competitors, and that was four days of organ music 
the same pieces over and over and over again <laughs> for eight hours a day for four days. And I actually went to all of those, um, that judging period. And I think that was really great for me because it gave me a lot of education about, like I started to get a sense of what was good, what wasn't good, who was playing well. Uh, and, and they were, they're blind judging. So I didn't know who were the people in that, but I think that that was a really important thing for me to just kind of understand what was good organ music and what might not be as good. Uh, so that was like my education. Uh, and then once they chose the top 20, um, I interviewed everyone. And um, I also conferred with Thomas and a few other people who were on the judging board to see who might be the better players <laughs> that might have a chance of making it to further rounds. Um, because my biggest worry was that I was going to lose my entire education um, uh, right away in the first round. So I wanted to, so I interviewed everyone. Pardon me? Oh, I'm hearing um, something else. Uh, so basically part of the selection was, are they great characters? Are they interesting? Do they have a good story? And then a secondary part of that was, do I think maybe they can make it <laughs> past the first round? Um, so it was a combination of those two things, which is unusual, but I think I leaned more heavily on, are they just interesting people? Do I want to watch them? Do I want to talk to them? Do I want to spend the next two years with them? Uh, so that was the biggest part of the selection was uh, their personality, uh, more than the playing, I would say. Yeah, she asked me if uh, if she could buy a couple of billets and uh, pass the first round just to make sure, but uh, the price was a little too high for the independent film budget. Um, je, je vois qu'on a quelques, quelques amis uh, francophones de Québec. Uh, merci d'être avec nous ce soir. Puis, uh, si jamais vous avez si jamais il y a des questions en français, uh, posez-les. Uh, je vais les traduire uh, on the fly. Et puis, uh, on, on verra qu'est-ce que ça donne. And uh, well, I think I just saw a question come in from Hannah Hegarty. How many hours a day do uh, you all practice uh, on average? Um, so this is being recorded and there's a chance that Hanzola and other of your professors, current or past may see. Um, so just to take that into consideration as you formulate your answers. And I can say already that Chen Wan is gonna be more than the other two. <laughs> Go for it, Nick. Uh, it's hard to say. It, I mean, I, it depends on what I'm doing. I mean, for the competition, I was at that point, I was a full time student, but yet I did practice probably a couple hours each day. But I don't think it matters how much you practice. It's how well you practice and the kind of practice you do. You know, I don't want to sound preachy, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm just going to say I feel like I do less practice, but it's just more focused. Um, and of course, yeah, so it depends. Right now, I mean, I'm not in a practice room eight hours a day like I could have been for the competition. Um, there's no reason to be, but yeah, it, it depends on everybody. I, I think Elsie's probably the same way. I think you're a very focused pra uh, practicer, you know? That would be a no, <laughs> it's just inconsistent. That, and it's clear as day. Nick is consistent, Elsie is not, but we, we still do it our own way and make it work. <laughs> no, but I have to piggyback on what Nick said, because I don't know if you guys know this. Nick and I have been in school together since 2011, the exact same schools in the exact same three degrees. So Nick and I know each other pretty well. And I got to tell you that Nick, Nick's consistency is what really I think he, he's getting at, which is that four hours of really focused practice is better than eight hours of practice. And I'll be honest, since my concerts were canceled, it's been hard to find a desire to practice the organ. But I will say that I've turned my attention to other skills. Um, it's some of them somewhat dictated by my students. So I've had to do a lot of music production for my organ work at Wesleyan. My composers send me works that are in all sorts of strange formats that I then have to decode and basically produce like a producer would and then make them work as organ pieces. Um, so I've actually turned a lot of my attention to more synthesizers and things lately uh, and different sorts of video and audio editing software just to the benefit of my students because that's actually the only way that the composers who want to write for the organ 
can actually do it. So we've done some really creative things. Um, and also playing my 1915 Steinway all the time. So piano chops have definitely been growing a lot, but I, I, I will admit that practicing organ repertoire has not been at the top of my list lately. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that for a time. And how about you, uh, Juan Shen? Well, I don't want to be the, the bad person, but for me, <laughs> uh, three hour practice is like warming up. It's like doing yoga for myself. It's quite comfortable. And uh, if I have, uh, have time, six hours will be very comfortable for one day. Uh, more than six hours, I will have the, uh, my back problem. But uh, during the competition, I was uh, working in Central Conservatory of Music in China, but studied in Berlin. So I fly between these two cities every week. So uh, when I'm teaching, I always hope that I have three hour or six hour uh, practice for myself, but I couldn't. So my trick is uh, before my sleep, I must use at least 20 minutes to practice and then I go to sleep. So in yes. my dream, I will keep practicing, <laughs> using the sleeping time to practice. And the hour uh, before I go to the flight, I practice. And uh, during the flight, the sleeping at same that, that I can practice. And after I landing to Berlin, the practice like mad. So <laughs> that's the way I live in the, during the CLC. But now I can more focus on teaching my college students. And so the practice time is more free and comfortable. Practice makes perfect, as they say. Uh, uh, bonjour de Montréal. Uh, une petite question de Caroline Deschamps. Merci. Elle dit, j'ai adoré le film. A question for the competitors. What's with all the banana eating? Uh, well, I don't think we have any film of uh, Wan Shen eating a banana. Uh, so we'll, we can move right, right into Nick and Alcee. Yeah, Nick. It's kind of, I think, I don't know who started it, Alcee. Did you do that uh, in your undergrad? I think it was no, Tom. Oh, no. Man. Okay. I should, I should, we should talk about this because <laughs> Hans Ola was the first one to confirm it. Whether or not he was original, remember we were sitting there. And Hans Ola told us the story about St. Albans, which is a huge competition in London that Thomas Gaynor won. But he was saying that um, one of the judges who was super famous will remain unnamed. All the competitors who got knocked out of the first round came to him and said, what's the problem? And he told them all at the same time, none of you ate a banana. That's why you were so shaky. So from that, Hanzola has always put the banana concept on us, but it's not unusual because it the potassium, I think, is a natural beta blocker. And if you actually have too many of them, you'll kind of be in stasis. So you kind of have to time it out. But I, I don't know if it's folklore, but it certainly works for me. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's a ritual. I mean, and it's like a it's like a lucky charm. So like every recital, I have to have that banana just a few minutes before that recital or else if I don't have a banana in sight, I'm like, freaking out. I'm sure the recital would go fine, but you know, it's, it's just, it's, I always have to have a trusty banana. So. But the 20, but the 2017 competition happened in Canada before marijuana was legalized. So now <laughs> like, does the banana have competition now that you could just have a little gummy bear or something? Why don't you tell <laughs> us Thomas? But also he made buy a lot of bananas for him. He always forgot his bananas and I had to go running around <laughs> Looking bananas for all C. That's true. Well, and when uh, when he comes to Montreal now for for gigs or whatnot, he often stays with one of our board members, Joan Ivory, mm -hmm. and Joan actually doesn't like bananas at all. Um, but whenever she's in, whenever she knows Elsie or Tom or anyone's coming to stay, she makes sure she picks up a, 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 a thing of bananas. No, it's necessary. I don't think it's just organist. I'd be willing to bet there's some pianists that stick by it too. But what, Yuan Shin, what's your strategy? How do you calm yourself down? We use bananas. What do you use? Like in the film that me and Sebastian, we have chocolate. I think the, the uh, North American team, they, you and uh, Nick, you will uh, trust in banana and the wheat in, in Berlin. And in Germany, we trust uh, uh, chocolate. I think the mechanism be, uh, be, uh, both in these two food, uh, which make you calm down and can control yourself, not shaking. Uh, mm. and that's uh, also a, a story in Germany that you need chocolate be before the concert. And so Thomas, chocolate mm -hmm. covered bananas? What, what, what could be wrong with that? Chocolate covered bananas. <laughs> 
Um, Christine Kelly asks the question, uh, do you all wear uh, shoes to play the pedals? Do you all wear organ shoes? Yes, no. Yeah, and, I mean, it's, it's yeah. pretty standard. At least I've noticed more of our European friends have different kinds of shoes. I'm sure you guys seen. Um, and perhaps Asian organists too don't have the same kinds of shoes that we have in America. Um, but yeah, you basically can't play in tennis shoes. You're just going to, you know, slop up all the notes. Um, so yeah, we all wear special heeled shoes. I um, think Cameron so Carpenter would take offense to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, so uh, interestingly enough, little piece of the CIOC folklore is that our very first winner, 2008 competition, Frédéric Champion, plays, at least he did at the time, I think he still does, but definitely in the competition he played in slippers. For our nos amis francophones, peut-être si vous vous souvenez du des pantoufles de de Frédéric Champion, c'est ça qu'est-ce qu'il portait quand il jouait à à la Bastille Notre-Dame pour les preuves finales. Uh, and now we've got a question from uh, Farah Mohammed. Alsi, do you enjoy your new teaching position? Yeah, it's great. It's honestly a challenge because now it's like my worth is not necessarily hinged on how fast I can play or how perfectly I can play, but how much time I invest into my students. So I hate to say it's almost being like a parent because it's like you're only going to get as much out of the student as you invest in them. So the funny thing, Hanzola told me a long time ago that when you invest totally into your students, a little part of you kind of has to be sacrificed. It's like maybe instead of practicing so many hours in a day, you have to teach some extra lessons to get the kids who aren't doing so well. So I think in a lot of way, ways, it's really grown me and it's, it matured me in a way because I have to kind of be a, li a lot sure. more self-centered now. Oh, um, <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> um, so, and Farah also asks, do you teach jazz organ as well? I teach jazz harmony, but we don't have a Hammond organ. So I, I kind of actually discourage the kids from trying to learn jazz on the pipe organ. If we can go to the piano and do some basic technique building and then take it to the organ, I'm big time behind that. But yeah, the school is actually pushing me to get a Hammond for that very reason. But yeah, do about... You, mm -hmm. Do you need a Hammond? I have a friend who have a friend who's, who has a Hammond organ they're trying to get rid of. Donate it to Wesley and we'll be glad to uh, have it. Let's <laughs> see what we can do. Yeah, but I had about four or five jazz students um, this past. So that was really awesome. Oh, all right. Well, I, I, a question close to me right now. But hi, Sean, why not? Do you, you, you may not know this, but I'm actually in Nova Scotia now, and I'm going to stay here for most of the summer. So perhaps we'll get together. Uh, he asks a question for Stacy. Will you do another music-based movie? Uh, and what would you like to do, assuming that, assuming that budget's not a, a problem, that you've got the funding? Oh, assuming we got the funding. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm in the middle of a film right now that I'm working on that got halted by COVID. Um, so I've been really busy. And I, it actually takes about three years to make a film. Um, so it's, it's a long period of time. So I'm kind of focused on this film right now, which is an environmental film about um, where things go to die. So these metal graveyards around the world of ships and planes and and it's about the people that are sort of working with those things. Um, so that's really fun and I'm really into that uh, right now. Um, and then I have another film that I'm working on which is called Tough Old Broads. And it's, uh, it's about sort of female groundbreakers, like the first woman to the Boston Marathon or the, like the first woman in her field. And uh, them, now that they're older, looking back on their careers and also what they're doing now because all of them are people, pretty tough old broads. So uh, I've got my sort of slate full for another six years at least. <laughs> and then I want to do a boxing movie because I really love boxing. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was a Rocky reference in the film. I'm really into boxing. And uh, so I'd like to do something about that. Uh, so it might be a while before I get back to music. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll hope that John Gru's not watching right now, or else you'll be you'll be off his Christmas card list. Um, but that's okay because you're Jewish. <laughs> 
um, another question from Christine Kelly. Did you ever have to play up so high in the air that you were scared? She said she did in an old Catholic church and was afraid um, she would fall backwards down. That's kind of like, that's a tie into your airplane uh, <laughs> film. <laughs> I mean, I think the, in, in Montreal, the Immaculate is pretty high up. If you're, if you're at the organ and you're looking down at the audience, however, you have a piece of the organ behind you, so there's no way of falling. Um, but no, I, I don't think we, I've had that problem yet. Yeah. And, and Notre Dame is quite high up, but the way that it's built and the, the, just the sort of expanse, you don't get that sensation. Anyone else? I'm curious. I've had some bad ones, I, but I think I'm sure Jan has had the worst because she actually lives in Europe. But, you know, for me, I think some I think it was the cathedral in Nantes and then the uh, Saint Eustache in Paris. Just scary. I mean, the, it's like there's little pieces of wood that kind of cut you off from the, you know, from the balcony. But if you look down, it's like you're just square with the ceiling. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I've had some scary. I don't like heights particularly, so yeah. Yeah, I remember visiting, um, oh, it was an organ. It's, uh, you'll know where it is. It's in Belgium uh, on where, the, where they've got a nice new track organ like stuck on the side of the cathedral wall. And to get to it, you have to crawl out. You, you kind of feel like you're cliffhanging mm -hmm. to get to it. Uh, what about you, uh, Wan Shen? Well, uh, the organ building, the, the concert is not always you uh, back to uh, uh, the organ balcony, it's back at the back side. Uh, so sometimes we, uh, the organ building, uh, for, uh, to protect the organ, they will uh, build something at the, uh, the behind the chair. So I think that may, make me you know, nervous. But sometimes one after a concert, you go to the audience and the, uh, the balcony is very low. And uh, in the moment you, you're going and you're really uh, scaring that you will fall down. But beside that, because sometimes when you play the organ, you actually face to the balcony. So that's not a problem. And uh, so it depends on the organ design, I think. Good. Uh, let me see where we're at now. Uh, t -t 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 what was it like the first oh this is a good question what was it like the first time you saw yourself in the film uh one shen the first time i uh, saw yes, your I... saw, saw the film and saw you on on the screen yes in this film. uh i yeah. think uh, stacy sent us um a demo and uh, uh by uh a screen, which one I forgot, and uh, we feel quite exciting about it, and uh, everything I talked, and uh, it's bring me because the competition is finished, and uh, this film bring me back a lot of memory, and uh, I just always uh, feel pity that uh, the part I cooking is not in included, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I really it's really cost me a lot of time to clean my uh, apartment <laughs> and oh, yes. no, no sense uh, about my apartment so i feel a little bit pity but all of the practice part is uh, still there so <laughs> yeah yeah well actually you know uh Huan Shen, all of all of my scenes were cut from the movie so <laughs> I, I almost i almost didn't let it go to screen but uh, i got i got over i got over it uh, how about you nick i think i think like all of us, there were some cringeworthy moments of, you know, seeing yourself and, you know, certain uh, pieces, especially that you play that gets in the film is like, oh, I wish I would have played that differently, but also how you, how you talk as well. Um, I know, I, but I think that seeing it for the first time, I was like, wow, I mean, I've never seen myself in that good of video or audio quality before. I think it's, it was just <laughs> incredible. I mean, you know, I've never been in a Hollywood film, but it's, looks like it and I think that's great it's a way of showing the instrument um, to the public in such a really high quality high quality way cool I'll see anything to add um yeah I mean I thought it I was scared the first time because I Stacy had full opportunity 
millions of opportunities to make me look like an idiot. I mean, it could basically be like a week's worth of footage of me being a complete fool. She's and saving that now, for the sequel. She's saving that for the sequel. Fail, right? <laughs> this, this is the sequel. We're gonna we're gonna start a GoFundMe page. Listen, pay, honey, I got pay, some secrets pay, too. You better watch it. Pay for part two. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, no, but I I think once I realized that I mean you know the funny thing is is I was if I'm gonna be completely honest, some part of me has a tiny bit of resentment that now my personality is kind of crystallized in this way at this time. But I think people, it's actually come off well. I think if I wouldn't have been completely myself, it would have been more of a flop. So I'm kind of glad that I said the ridiculous things that I did, because um, I really assumed that they wouldn't use most of it. So I just kind of, <laughs> I was such good friends with the camera crew that it was basically like a hangout for us. So I was always, we were always, they were egging me on it sometimes. Stacy will tell you. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, Afraz Muji asks, uh, uh, what are the loudest enchaînade trumpets you've ever played? Ooh. Hmm. So for anybody who's watching who doesn't know what an enchaînade uh, uh, pipe is, it's the ones that are, are sticking out horizontally as opposed to the typical vertical pipes. Hmm. Any... I think it's Wan Chen again. I think she's gonna have it. Wan Chen, what what are the latter shamads? I mean the 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 um, the shamads in Notre Dame are, are not quiet. You mean the uh, the Spanish trumpet? Yeah. What's mm -hmm. the loudest ones you've uh, you've ever played? Uh, I think Notre Dame de Paris is the one I play because it's much more near to the organist, but it's mm. uh, some softer down the, to the uh, audience seat. So uh, then the organist in Notre Dame uh, de Paris tell me, don't hesitate to use the chamad or the red in, including because it's, it's uh, the color of the organ. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but it's a uh, uh, charity for the organist. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and the, and anyone uh, you know, like the, I don't know if any of you've played them or at least heard them, but the state trumpets at St Paul's Cathedral, London, are also a, a pack a pr pretty powerful punch. I also um, think the, the Maison Symphonique right here in Montreal is pretty impressive. Um, yeah, those for people who don't know, there's a little button that you can press at the organ, and they come out really dramatically and slowly, and you can see them come out. Very cool. yeah, on a on a rail track, and uh, uh, the first time I saw that was actually when the organ was completely assembled in the Casabon factory in Saint Hyacinth about uh, six months before it was installed at the Maison Symphonique. Um, and, uh, and now we've got a question for Nick from Farah Mohammed. Uh, what gave you the idea for doing your series on hymns? Oh, I guess this is a bit of an aside. Uh, your videos are great, and I don't think anyone has ever done something like this before. They're wonderful. So, no, I, I think just to say, running off of Elsie, how I'm using this extra time is I found that in this time where I can't perform that I am also trying to brush up on computer skills, audio, video skills and educational outreach. So I think that's what Far is referring to is I, I've made a series of um, basically looking at different historical periods of Christian hymns because uh, I'm, a, I'm a church organist and trying to also feature underrepresented uh, composers and things like uh, women, especially women composers in the church uh, people of color. We're going to work on that as well. And uh, so, yeah, I've been using this time to work on um, some things that I wouldn't probably normally have had the chance to do. Mm. Yeah, and I think, well, that just uh, the couple of things you touched on there are questions for the for the entire organist community, like what in in the in the current climate of political activism and uh, tr trying to address racial inequalities, what can, what more can, should, should we be doing? I, f I feel that we're privileged, uh, well, I, 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 me as a white male uh, is infinitely privileged anyway, but the CIOC is, is privileged in the sense that diversity has always been our strength. I mean, running an international competition, we pride ourselves on the number 
of different countries that are represented and the, the, just the, the, the more variety, the better. Uh, but that's not necessarily how, how the, the organ world is. You know, the, the organ world is still predominantly white and male. Uh, and what what more what more should can the CIOC be doing, and what more what 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 else can be done to to improve this and, and make it more representative of the communities for whom we're, we're trying to make great music? That was the question. So, if anyone has any um, suggestions, I I mean I think the problem is is that organists are so flooded with the duties of being an organist that there's hardly any time or energy to devote into diversifying our audiences are, you know, it's like, there's so much already. It's like, there's so much that you have to pour into trying to diversify an art form. I mean, whether it's on social media or buying or hiring a publicist to get it out. And I think it's, I think it's two things. The, the first is just, where are you reaching? Who are you trying to be heard by? And I think in these cases, we've done a pretty good job of trying to get different types of people to be interested in the organ, but we're not going to the inner cities, elementary schools to introduce them and maybe get a potential organist. And it's like, somebody once told me when it comes to art forms, especially classical music, it's like you're constantly throwing seeds to the people, hoping that something will catch. And if you throw a thousand seeds, you might get one person but it's that valuable one person who might get interested in the organ or become an organist. So I, I really think it's just a, it's a problem, not that's anyone's fault, but I just don't think we have the time to invest what I think the world really deserves from us to bring the organ to more people mm -hmm. in different race and class settings. And, and on lines with, with repertoire, I mean, I think this is a conversation for like the wider classical music community is we have to, as organists, we have to get off the high horse of the same old pieces all the time by white males and explore other kinds of music um, rather than being set in these traditions that are just all the same kind of music. So I think what we can do is just find ways of uh, playing more music by people that are underrepresented and also commissioning works by those kinds of people, I think would be really good idea. Yeah, and I'll see um, in the film or in the competition won by playing music that was was slightly outside the box. I mean, that's not necessarily the entire reason he won. Certainly it's not, but it, it, it was uh, part of the choices that he made. And even he made, he made sort of a, uh, a, a, a sort of off the cuff remark uh, at one point in the film about the lack of black judges. Uh, but it's quite, it's actually true that uh, I, I, the CIOC has never had um, a, a, bl a black judge uh, and it's something that we need to work on. And uh, Elsie has very kindly offered to serve as jury anytime that we would like. Um, yeah, and I, and I, told, I told him I would take that under consideration, uh, but, uh, but there we have it. So we-, we uh, Can I <laughs> clarify something for one second since we're being real about all this? I think at the end of the day, it's not even a black or white thing. I think just having one visible minority, there are Hispanics who play the organ, underrepresented, Chinese, Japanese, Korean organists in Canada, in the United States that are being underrepresented. So it's not it's not just a black white thing. What about, I, okay, just, wait, 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 what about women? And women too, of course. Come of on, course. I mean, in the, 20, in the 2017, there were how many men and Six women, seven women. I mean, Yuan, can you speak to that as well? For the competitors, yeah. I mean, we're we. I think we actually. Well, she uh, um, go ahead, one Shen, if you have anything to to say about what it was like being a female organist in the competition. Oh uh, well, I think the, when I started to study organ in the beginning in Europe, and some European professor asked me, well. What do you choose to do after you graduate? Do you, uh, do you really can find a job in China, in Asia, as an organist, as a female organist? Uh, if you, you believe so, uh, go on. So I think the, the female organist are feeling a little bit uh, strife in Europe too, to, uh, about finding a job and whether the church will appreciate the, as organist. Because 
in a church, you need uh, as organist, you need to do a lot of things. You need to contact in the choir. And if you have your own family and a baby, and if you are busy, maybe you couldn't do so much. So I think that's the employer nervous about that. But um, no, oh no, after uh, 2019, I just uh, graduated from Berlin. I think the situation is getting much changed. And uh, a lot of my friends you know uh, Korean female organist and the Japanese, and they all found, in, uh, found job and to do. And uh, for the retro part, I think that uh, it's not only black and white uh, music, and uh, also uh, the Asian music is uh, growing up in the organ um, world. Uh, I, I am hoping the uh, organ festival is between seven years. Uh, I'm hoping that this year I have to stop. Uh, but the uh, last year, uh, Stacy was visited my festival and we played the pipe dream in my uh, f uh, festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, we start to have this composition competition in my festival to encourage young um, Chinese composers to write something for organ because it's not only it should be a contemporary music or it should be a, a Chinese melody, Asia melody. We just encourage more and more new work. Uh, uh, give a burst to that, that new work to the organ world. So we, I'm really looking forward to have a very colorful, colorful um, tomorrow future for the organ music in um, in the in future. So I have a uh, strong uh, belief and uh, hope uh, to both the female organists and uh, also the, the colorful organ music. Great, and uh, I, the, for, for anyone who doesn't know, the, the preliminary round of the CIOC is blind. So it's an audio recording where the judges don't know anything about the player. They just listen purely to the music. Um, but uh, we, I know it's always a point of pride for, uh, has been throughout the, the, the existence of the CIOC with John Grew, who's been uh, leading the jury uh, every year up until this year and was a member of the jury for the 2020 uh, preliminary jury that we had just before the pandemic. Um, and so we, he was always so excited if we had a, if we had a strong um, representation of female organists. And the same, the same with, uh, um, with countries uh, and diversity. The, 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 more, the more countries that are represented, the, the happier and more energized our board of directors is and all of our sponsors and, and support network. Uh, we've had a few questions come in that we'll try and get through quickly. Uh, Juan Chen uh, Farah would like to know who you studied with in Germany. Oh, uh, I studied in, question to me, isn't it? I may repeat who I studied with in Berlin, in, in Germany. Okay. Uh, I studied with Leo van Dosela, Professor Leo van Dosela, and uh, Professor Erwin Leasunha in, in uh, University of Berlin. University of Art Berlin, and uh, I like them very much. They are a good professor and a good coach, and uh, both very funny. And uh, yes. uh, it's a little bit a uh, uh, pity that uh, Leo just retired, uh, that uh, people cannot uh, study with him anymore. But you can go go ahead and have a private license. And uh, <laughs> Elvin and Leo, they both the uh, uh, Netherlands. They are Dutch and they are um, uh, organized in Martini, uh, Martini Church in Kroningen, which is very beautiful Schnitzel organ. And uh, so I think uh, you can go to have a uh, concert, listen concert of them. Uh, yeah, and actually, actually in, in speaking of organ films and organ documentaries, there's a, there's a documentary about that organ called the Martini Kirch Rondeau made by William Fraser, who's a Canadian based in the UK. But we, we showed it in our festival a few years ago. Uh, Rachel Spry Lamy asks, how do you, how do we advocate for the organ in today's culture? What are your dreams to elevate the organ to new heights? Anybody? Watch the film. Tell it, watch the film more than once. Get five people to watch the film. Make donations I mean, to the CIOC. These oh, are all uh, wonderful look. ways. <laughs> Come on, I'll see. How about donations to this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, his CD. Just, yeah. just a little reminder here, guys. If you want to check that out, no problem. Just say. <laughs> All CD is wonderful, by the way. You should uh, listen and buy. Oh, honestly, didn't we pay? Tom, but didn't I pay for that too? Stop. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> with you. I mean, honestly, Thomas. Um, I think organ is in some ways like some strange, strange religion that people happen across and they know it's weird, but it's so enticing and it's so inviting that I think people, if they knew how cool it was, would be willing to become an organ nerd. So I, I think it's really us to almost be some sort of organ evangelists. I'm not trying to bring too many Christian themes in here, but it's like, we have to take organ to the places where it hasn't been heard before. And we have to make advocates and we have to make listeners of the instrument. And if we're not willing to do that, there will be no future for the organ. That's my humble opinion. You so, is, so, you on is doing that. I mean, the concerts that she puts on are packed full of young people. So you on should be answering that question because you have it. You you've done that already in China. It's really quite incredible, actually, what she's done. Yes, the festival I'm holding in my conservatory every year. Uh, we will have a certain uh, concert for young people. Uh, and uh, of course, the, the very great organist, uh, like uh, Professor Hans Ola Eriksson, visit my uh, festival and play the great concert. That will be the uh, highlight of the uh, festival. And also, we will uh, play some easy singing or popular things or movie music for the young people. To, in China, that uh, the art music is pretty, uh, more like a concert culture. So people like to enjoy uh, what they never heard or they they heard before. So that's why the music uh, from the movie or the transcription is very popular here. And we, we will have the cartoon music for the very kids people, uh, organist uh, play by organ too. And we will have the organ kids uh, to set up a small organ uh, for the kids too. So we, we design everything uh, to uh, break the people thinking that the organ is uh, uh, play the Bach music only and uh, or very old or slow, uh, very uh, flowery on music only. It can be virtuoso and uh, beautiful, romantic, lovely, it can be everything. Yeah, and I actually had the chance to visit your festival too and perform with the Christian Lay in our 2011 winner. And it was wonderful after each concert to have so many young uh, kids come up and, and want to meet and, and get your pictures taken and, and really just seem to love the music. A um, couple of more questions. Uh, Brian Stratton, congrats, Stacy. Awesome. Full caps documentary. Hope you make it back to Texas. I'll see no words, but lots of tears and joy. Do you plan any further films on organists? Well, I think w with the GoFundMe and the sequel with all of Alcy's outtakes, that will be uh, that will be a blockbuster. You want cooking in there? All <laughs> suit is the word. No. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, and I would love to come back to Texas and have a good time with y'all again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Alfraz asks, uh, sort of tying into what, how, to, how to reach out and build the organ audience, what do we all think of Cameron Carpenter's international touring organ? I love it. <laughs> I do. I know, I know there's controversy around this, but I think it's wonderful because it brings the organ to people who might not hear it. You can do public concerts. Uh, he's doing a tour now in Germany of old age homes during COVID, which is just really beautiful. Yeah, he's adapted it onto a truck, so he just pulls it up and great. starts playing. I think it's great as a way to popularize the art organ or just to let people know about the organ, because I think people don't even think that it's an instrument that you can hear outside of a church. And I think that the touring organ, especially... Um, you know, taking the organ out of a church might be making it more approachable for certain people that might not want to venture into a church. So I'm all for it. And I'd love to hear what everyone else has to say. 
No, I mean, I think he he's obviously has an amazing technique. I've seen him live before and just blown away by what his feet can do. You can go check him out. He plays the Chopin Revolutionary Etude on YouTube with just all in the pedals, which is really hard to do. Um, so yeah, really, really great. And he has like such a unique image that I think will attract a lot of people to see him. I mean, I don't wear uh, sequined shoes or anything, but I, mean, Yet. I, came, clo <laughs> I Yet. came close in the film. Never say never. <laughs> <laughs> I came close in the film with, I had, you know, snazzy socks and stuff. So I'm getting my way there. Well, and uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And the CIOC is actually working on a, on a grant proposal right now because the Conseil des Arts de Montréal and the Quebec, uh, the uh, Conseil des Arts de Quebec are offering grants to hold outdoor events this summer and early this fall. Um, and so we're basically looking at adapting a help work and a screen to, to present uh, outdoor screenings of the film with coupled with, uh, with short recitals like we did with, um, uh, with, the, with the film last year. So, so stay tuned, it won't, it won't have all of the gizmos or the uh, speaker power uh, house of Cameron's organ, but uh, it, uh, it we, we definitely checked out his his mobile uh, touring uh, touring sit setup at the moment to see uh, to see how we could adapt that for uh, for some uh, cinema in the park in Montreal hopefully this year. And uh, Christine Kelly asks, Wan Shen, is your dad proud of you now? <laughs> no, he's always been proud of her. <laughs> Well, uh, my father was my music teacher since I was four years old. So uh, during every day's dinner, and uh, he's talking about, uh, you can play this better, what you, uh, what you mistake. And so I have a little bit uh, problem with my stomach because every day one, during eating is I having lesson. Well, I think uh, as all the parents, they are always uh, proud of the kids, they're just uh, using their way to push you a little bit more. And uh, what uh, happened recently is my parents, my, my father told me to practice less because uh, he, he know I have some uh, back health problem. And uh, like what Nick said, uh, he said that you only need to practice focus, you know, for so long time. And, uh, and he want me to date, to marry, to have baby. So that's the, another pressure, then practice organ. So no more stay at home, go dating, find some men. That's the, another pressure. So I think at all the parents. He's very proud of her though. I, I did a long interview with your father, Yuan, and I have to tell you, even before the competition, he was extremely proud of you. Great. Well, we're just about out of time. And so I thought to, we should bring it back to the film uh, and uh, ask all of the three of you what your, well, four of you, because Stacy is allowed to have a favorite too. What, uh, what's your favorite scene in the film? I, know, I don't want to call on anyone in particular um, in case I, you need a minute to think, but you can go. Whoever's I mean, ready I think mine is playing mini golf uh, just because, Oh no! I mean, it's just the juxtaposition of me and Elsie, you know, the white guy playing mini golf, you know, and, you know, it's just, I, just, I don't <laughs> normally play mini golf, but it's just, she just had to put it in there. Uh, but it's just, it's kind of comical and uh, it's just a nice way to show me and my family. I'll see. I think that's probably my favorite too. But the funny thing is, is it's not, again, not really a white black thing, but it's I think <laughs> more of a Southern culture versus Midwest yeah. culture thing. Um, it's so Texas, that, that scene. Um, my little brother's glad to have a cameo too. So I, think, <laughs> I don't know what I think about that music you put in the background when he came on the screen, but. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> Was it bad? I don't know. That is one of my favorite films, although I am partial to the Rocky training montage that I think is probably my favorite. Yeah, and then I had to uh, do a CrossFit scene. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things people don't see about how we made those push-ups happen, but... <laughs> <laughs> He did all the push-ups. The, the secrets of the silver screen are supposed to stay undisclosed. 
Wen Chen, what's what's your favorite moment? So the Chinese play Tai Chi. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, the time with my parents and uh, also the tuning organ and my par uh, my father helped me to hold the key and uh, uh, go inside. Actually, uh, in China we build up too many, not too many, a lot of organ, but nobody know how to play or how to maintain it. So organists to have to do the double work, play and tuning. Uh, it's a little bit dust, dusty inside. So sometimes my father go inside the organ with me to clean the organ uh, carefully. So that part, I love it very much. <laughs> my father always um, have, the, have the glass and uh, use, oh, which number I should remember. <laughs> so it's <laughs> lovely. How about you, Stacey? Uh, I think it's the Rocky, definitely the Rocky. I don't know, it's just a fun thing that I did and I just love it. So, and everybody played along with me, which was really sweet. Like you guys were such champs and you did it and it was really fun. So, uh, and it turned out great. So that was Casey, how long did it take for us to shoot the Rocky scene? And how far did you make me run around the entire city of Montreal? I'd like you to tell them about that. Hey. To only use 30 <laughs> seconds of it at that. No, there's a longer version. I have like a three minute version of that. But how long did you have me running around the city? It was crazy. All he ran his butt off and he hadn't eaten. I think you were like starving and we kept on making him run and run and run. And he was really running like full on, full on. And we were following him with the car uh, and uh, he hadn't eaten anything. And so by the end of it, I did give him a free meal. Yes. <laughs> well, 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 I'll see um, jean willy and I like to run half marathons together and I always like to win. So um, I'm good. Get, I'm good. Y'all can, can handle that up. Y'all can handle that up. I'm All short right. distance. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a wonderful hour to spend with you all tonight. And everyone who's been on with us, thank you for tuning in. Um, enjoy the film. I think it's being screened almost 1,500 times this week uh, on over 500 um, uh, uh, PBS affiliate channels. So that's wonderful uh, exposure for the film and for all of you. And as soon as we're allowed to have concerts again, I hope that all of you get invited to play concerts in all of the cities that are screening this uh, this film this week. So, oh, I so think the, the film's yeah. streaming all month. So for 30 days, it will be streaming on the PBS site. So tell your friends. Yeah, stream, stream to your heart's content. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've, I've seen the film probably, uh, the only person who's seen it more often is probably Stacy of, of all mm -hmm. of you. So everybody else can try to catch up to me. Uh, and uh, I think I know the entire script verbatim now. Uh, so <laughs> including my commentary that I always throw in to whoever's sitting beside me. So uh, take care, you all. I hope, uh, I hope we're able to see each other in person sooner than later. And until then, stay safe, especially I'll see you in Texas, where they had 5,000 new cases today. And everyone's been warned to stay indoors. So uh, follow public safety advice. Now, stay Tom, safe. if they're yes. staying indoors, they can listen to my new CD, can't they? from and spotify can, or apple music thank you lord and they can stream 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 on pbs pipe dreams so maybe if you can write the governor and have him put that at the end of next uh, tomorrow's press release we'll be in uh, we'll be in good shape thanks everyone <laughs> uh Adrian, the mastermind who's been looking after everything behind the scenes, said the uh, the uh, the CD image doesn't show up clearly on the live stream. But uh, if you Google uh, Alci, uh, I'm sure it'll come up. I'm sure you can find a CD on Amazon. Just search for Alci Chris um, and at McClassic, who's the producer. So voila, thank you all so much for being with us tonight and great seeing you all. And looking forward to uh, some some more new adventures uh, soon. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.